Hi, how are you today? The improved package has arrived. We're having it fitted in time for FP1. Have a look at the factory report. Yo, what's going on guys? It is Tom and welcome back to a brand new video in episode number 2 of my F1 2016 career mode and we're here for the second race in Bahrain and quickly just having a little chat with Chris and he's bringing us the brand new upgrades for season 2 and there's quite a fair few upgrades, 4 big upgrades, uh, 2 of them for fuel efficiency to try and improve, to try and improve, sorry, our fuel, uh, just our fuel rate and how much we use because I can basically afford to run less fuel in the races if this upgrade works nicely for us and also the drag reduction to hopefully basically improve how well or not at and how nice our car performs in turbulent air and hopefully aid us when it comes to overtaking and also cornering speed. Now um, we don't need to practice now on the Friday afternoon as you can see we're kind of doing the track acclimatization here at Bahrain, a track that I actually quite prefer. Um, I, I was or I quite prefer in the night, should I say. I was never a massive fan of this track when it was in, in the daytime, and I don't know why the races weren't that memorable, but since it switched to night time, the tracks really just found like another level in terms of how much appreciation I have for the track and how much of a spectacle it really is. And um, as you can see so far, we're currently focusing on the task in hand, which is Friday practice, and we absolutely smashed the track acclimatization test, and we're going to do the exact same thing here on the tire wear test. The track that, you know, during the daytime is quite hard to get the tires in the right zone, and it actually took me up until the seventh lap to eventually hit the 80 point target, and uh, actually hitting a bit of traffic here with Nico Hulkenberg just holding us up on the pit stretch. We eventually come across the line, and and hit our target of 50 resource points in the tire wear test and then finally we would eventually move on to the qualifying performance test and uh, this one similar to Australia very tricky one here because the car felt much better than Australia the upgrades were working very nicely but the, the, the target lap time that was set was absolutely ridiculous but nevertheless we do actually beat the first target of 30 points and that is going to be the best that we can muster here at Bahrain and with that practice overall a pretty successful pair of sessions and moments and we're now going to move into qualifying for Bahrain So moving into the qualifying report and qualifying was underway on the Saturday evening as we approached the twilight and uh, so far so good this season for qualifying and as we move into Q1 for the second race of the season we're actually coming through the final corner for our first lap on the super soft tyres and it's going to be I think our one and only lap on this tyre and not pushing whatsoever the car felt really really good I feel like I could get through quite comfortably with a nice bit of fuel in the car and also standard mix to try and sandbag a little bit and uh, we actually came through the session quite comfortably 1.2 seconds after the pace but comfortably through in p5 and then with that we would move swiftly on to q2 where i'm going to try and get through on the soft tire which shouldn't be too much of an issue because the pace this weekend unlike australia has been really good the cars felt really really good the upgrades really working nicely and the car just feels to one with the track and as you'll see now coming across the line we are going to get comfortably through in p4 there so a very nice lap there and uh, actually dropping the fuel quite a bit and also run it in rich mix and try and comfortably get through but uh, p5 nevertheless a very slow result with Verstappen there also qualifying on the soft tyre as did Daniel Ricciardo so only three of us are going to be starting the race on the soft tyre but uh, finally moving into where it matters and this is q3 and I'm actually going to ride on board with you guys for the entire lap here because it was such a good lap and as you can see now approaching the first corner just before the 100 meter board you want to spot your breaking point get it down a second just clip the apex i just missed the apex ever so slightly there going through two try to carry as much speed as you can up through three and now we go slightly uphill and prepare yourself for the uphill braking of turn four a very tricky corner slightly off camber i'll take it in third key you can take it in second i prefer third and then i get a much better drive off the corner just have a little bit of a short shift into fourth as we now go into turns five six and seven which are the very twisty part of the track and so far we're in literally a quarter of a second up in the first sector so a very solid first sector so far so we slow it down for turn eight and now again on the power on the exit now approaching the very tricky turn nine that feeds into the tricky turn 10 in second gear making sure you don't lock up the left front a slight corner cut there as I actually carried in not enough speed and we then open up the DRS on the exit then a short little back straight which is the second DRS zone in the race and then eventually slow it all down for turn 11 in fourth gear make sure you carry as much speed from here as you can pick up the traction as soon as you can also as we go into 12 trying to keep it absolutely flat through here if you so dare and then now slow it down to third gear for turn 12 or 13 sorry and then trying to get the gears nicely sorted out to try and prepare yourself nicely done this back straight and then there's pretty much one more corner which technically has two corners in it but it's basically the final corner and we slow it down to third gear just clip the apex on the inside pick up the traction use the curb on the outside if you need to to get as much speed as you can and then open up the DRS as it comes available we come across the line and it's a brilliant lap 
for pole position and a very, very convincing qualifying performance in Bahrain. And the first time I can say that lap felt absolutely incredible. The car felt absolutely unbelievable. And as you can see, pole position by over two tenths of a second over our teammate says it all. And, um, a very, very solid session. I was really, really satisfied with that lap time and finally starting to feel the car underneath me and a car that, you know, should be the best car, if not the second best car on the grid as the R&D graph shows. But nevertheless, with this qualifying session, we're now going to move into the race for the Bahrain Grand Prix. So here we are then, it's race day for the Bahrain Grand Prix, a very interesting race, hopefully fingers crossed I can get the result that I need, obviously last time out we got very lucky to finish in second place, but I want to try and earn first place this race this time round on merit, so let's see what we can try and do in the very, very tricky race of Bahrain, try and have a nice solid strategy this race, and try and have a good race and keep out of any sort of first corner incident, so without further ado, let's jump into the race, and fingers crossed we can try and get a 25 pointer on the board. Okay, so round two of the season for the Bahrain Grand Prix, an incredible qualifying performance and we're now finally here in the very, very dusk skies in the middle of the desert for the race and looking at the strategy for this race, I think this is going to be the best option for us, we're going to try and avoid the super soft tyres completely because those tyres were out way too quick around this track and um, we're actually going quite aggressive with the fuel as well, seeing as we're on pole position, I think I want to try and hold the lead into turn one and try and push as hard as I can and sort of have a very commanding and uh, dominating race and uh, looking at our strategy once again you can see that we're going to go for a soft medium soft now the original strategy was a soft soft medium but I want to sort of get the medium out of the way first and then push nice and hard at the end so there's if there are any positions I need to make up I can make them up in the final stint on a better tire so without further ado we're going to jump into the race and fingers crossed let's see if we can try and make it two podiums in two races and try and uh, outscore the result that we did at Australia by getting the top step off the podium so let's jump into the race Alright, here we go then. The five red lights are coming on. On pole position for the first time this season. A really good qualifying lap and it's five red lights and lights out. And the way we go and I've had a pretty sketchy start actually. The back end really not wanting to stick for me there. And I have to go to defend the inside. Obviously starting on the soft tyres. I'm slightly compromised for initial traction as Rosberg goes around the outside and Raikens on my inside getting squeezed here as we go into turn two. Rosberg taking the race lead by the look of things and uh, we've settled into second place for now but trying to pick up some super stream on Rosberg. I'm running much more aggressive uh, error this race in terms of a uh, lower and much more higher straight down speed and I seem to be paying the dividends straight away as we get past Wolfsburg and retake the race lead and we can now try and hold on to first place as long as we can on these tyres. So far the pace has looked absolutely incredible all weekend long in this car. The upgrade's really working an absolute treat and so far an incredible lap time there to kick things off and we're well clear of the DRS detection zone so so far we're doing the job and the soft tyres are really working a treat. Oh, that's not good. A little bit deep into turn four there, but we are going to get the car straightened up quite nicely. It does seem like Ricardo, who's powering through the field, along with me, it does seem like the soft is a very nice race tyre to be on. And I think uh, most people probably go into that tyre after the first round of pit stops. Okay, so here we go then. Coming into the pit lane for my first stop of the race. It's been a very, very good first stint. Nice, solid, all-round pace, and I think Ricardo is following me in, and uh, yes, he is, there he is, so Ricardo following me in. I will say Ricardo's pace has started to get a little bit quite strong towards the end of the stint, and then he's actually going to hold me up a little bit, but uh, Ricardo's pace is getting quite strong there at the end of that stint, but crucially, we managed to ma manage the gap quite nicely. We have lost a little bit more time there because of us getting held up, so we need to try and set some early pace on these medians, but so far, the car is handling absolutely beautifully, and the pace is absolutely brilliant. Now, we've got a car of, uh, I think it's Stroll, just next to so let's see if we can try and just hold position now and stay ahead of the young Canadian and uh, he's actually going to try and go up the inside here. I'm going to hold the outside and there we go. We just hold it and Palmer's actually gone out of the race now. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But Stroll's looking very racy and we've got a VSC. So for the second race in a row, we've had a virtual safety car and Johnny Palmer's out of the race. So I'm guessing he probably broke down. But um, overall, like I was saying, the pace of this race is looking really good in this car and I'm really, really pleased with the upgrades. They've come in an absolute treat. The fuel saving is so much more improved compared to the previous race with the two fuel efficiency upgrades and the drag is severely reduced so you can really notice how nicely the car is flowing through these corners and so far we are dominating the Bahrain Grand Prix. This car is working absolutely beautifully even on these medium tyres and look at that, 33.5 comfortably faster than anybody else. We're really flying here at Sakir and really setting the circuit alight. 
Right, here we go. Right on the back of Bottas, but never mind because he's going to pull off into the pit lane. He's actually going to leave me some DRS as a parting gift, but uh, we can now continue to push on on these tyres and just keep on doing our thing. But so far, things are looking good. Ricardo's still there though, keeping us honest, and his pace is very similar to mine. And we've got Hamilton just behind on his set of soft tyres to watch out for, but so far, we're managing the gap quite nicely. So, just a couple of laps away from my final pit stop, but Ricardo. He's actually starting to get a little bit close. I did have a pretty poor lap that time around. I did make a mistake as the turn one went in too deep. But uh, either way, Ricardo looking very racy at the moment. And uh, similar to the first in, when Martaz seemed to fade a little bit, he seems to get the upper hand slightly. So I just need to try and keep an eye on Ricardo. I think I'll be okay. And uh, hopefully we, once we go to set out soft tyres, we can just push. But uh, we need to just hold off for a second now and try and focus on these worn tyres. Okay, so Ricardo peels off into the pit lane, presumably for an undercut because I'm pitting at the end of this lap, so we've got a really big lap ahead of us now. We need to push as hard as we can. Business has just picked up as Ricardo is trying to go for this race win. Okay, here we go into the pit lane. This is absolutely massive. I've got to absolutely nail this pit entry, make sure we get it all slowed down. And I've just, I thought I sped, I've just got it slowed down in time, which is absolutely perfect. So that pit entry is absolutely spot on. Now need the fastest pit stop they can possibly do, and it's not really particularly quick. 2.6. Red Bull tried to purposely pit Verstappen, I think, to try and see if they could hold me up. But crucially, Frey got the job done quick enough. But I do think I might just feel up behind Ricardo. It's going to be really close. Here comes Ocon. And then I think that's Ricardo behind. Getting up to speed now. Can we get ahead of Ricardo? No, we can't. Ricardo stays ahead. But we're going to be right on the back of him here. And uh, we are going to have one lap fresher tyres and a bit of extra fuel to burn off. So hopefully, we can keep up with the Aussie. Right, right at the back of uh, Esteban Ocon, sorry. Uh, I was going to say Sebastian Ocon, but it's actually Esteban Ocon. We're going to try and get past him here and not waste a lot of time. And got to try and keep up with Ricardo because he's pulling away and he's setting some pretty insane pace up front. I think I can match him, but I need to get past Ocon, which I have done. And now, just try and finish off the lap nice and strong. And uh, try and keep just pushing and hunting him down. Ricardo is so quick in that red ball. I can't keep up. I'm out of rich mix. I need a miracle at this point, but the red ball this season is such a fast car they are a force to be reckoned with Bottas at the Grand Prix could that trigger maybe a virtual safety car at this point that's all I've got to grasp onto but it's not going to give me a lot and it looks like we're not going to get anything for it so it looks like we're just going to have to try and just finish the race in this position because right now I just can't match Ricardo he's just too quick to, for me to match him I've just seen Ricardo stuck in that massive train of traffic so We'll have to see how things pan out, but we could have half a chance if Ricardo gets held up here. It looks like Ricardo's going to come home to win the race. Unfortunately, the traffic didn't really help me out, and Ricardo just actually cut through them like they were basically non-existent. And uh, they actually cost me a little bit of time, but either way, we're going to finish five seconds of drift of Ricardo. And Verstappen only two seconds behind us, but at the end of the day, P2, an okay result, but we need to improve. Red Bull look absolutely dominant. So there we have it then, that was the Bahrain Grand Prix and Daniel Ricciardo celebrates in style as he wins 2 out of 2 for the 2017 season and an incredible race victory for him here and uh, the exact same podium as last time out in Australia with both Red Bull drivers on the podium alongside myself there in the 1-2-3 position and overall Red Bull, like I said, I said it in Australia but still this race, they sort of came alive in the second half of the race and um, they're still easily the most dominant team on the grid and you know you've got to really watch out for them they're really really quick so we need to try and improve the car a little bit more and try and get a couple of upgrades on to try and get a bit closer to Red Bull because right now they are very very good and uh, I think an engine upgrade and a downforce upgrade might just give us the edge that we need but um, looking at the final race results you can see that obviously besides the podium Lewis Hamilton finished in P4 so a very good P4 for him after he DNF'd in Australia and then Kimi Raikkonen there in P5 so after both Ferrari started on the front row of the grid they both finished in second and fifth and a uh, disappointing race there for the pair of them with uh, Esteban Ocon getting a brilliant P5 there and also looking now at the driver's standing you can see that Ricardo is leading the way up front with a convincing lead after two wins on the spin and then I'm just sort of just following behind with two second places on the spin there and so is Verstappen with three second places on sorry two two third places on the spin but um, moving fine into the constructors you can see that Red Bull obviously are far and away the best team with Ferrari in second and Mercedes still in third place there and uh, I'm sort of waiting for Mercedes to sort of come alive in this season because they've been very quiet so far but uh, nevertheless guys if you did enjoy the video then a like would be greatly appreciated and if you can subscribe to my channel that would also be absolutely fantastic as I'm pushing towards 6,000 subscribers but nevertheless
first, guys. If you did miss the first episode, I do urge you to go watch it right now. It'll probably be on screen with the brand new annotation system that YouTube has. And also, I'll leave another random video for you guys to go check out, which I believe will probably be Strat to Glory or the Mick Schumacher Karima. But nevertheless, guys, hope you did enjoy the video. And thanks a lot for watching. And I'll see you in my next one very soon. Goodbye.